Good evening everybody, welcome to the studio this evening. We're going to carry on with this uh, monorail. Shall do the usual exercise of uh, removing the pussycat hairs from the cat that's been laid on it. They do like laying on the stuff that you're doing. Collecting energy apparently. So, um, I know I have some work that I want to do around there. I also want to put some form of foliage down the bottom. So I think we will have a go at foliage. How am I going to do this? I haven't got the foggiest idea. Um, I think we'll do it using sort of slight stamping techniques. So we're using this tool here and just applying uh, sort of leaf shaped things. Are these leaves in Florida that shape? No idea. They're going to be new. Um, so what I'm going to do is swap tools. So the nice thing about this particular machine is that's how easy it is to, um, to use a different tool. Some of the other machines you've got to, either they're not, you've either got to disconnect the wires here or you've got to disconnect them at the control or you can't disconnect any of them, you have to change the tips. Um, so we'll warm this up. Um, I'm going to turn this heat down actually. So that this doesn't go as quickly. I will turn it down even more. Uh, this might need to be turned up again, but we shall see. Um, let's start with it cool. I'm probably going to want this to be um, hotter than this, but for the minute, well, yeah, I probably do want it to be a little bit hotter. We'll work on it. Fluffy Twiglet, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. I'm experimenting on a live image. <laughs> may or may, may not be a good idea. Uh, I'm just going to apply something. <laughs> Whether this works out looking good or not, I don't know. Never tried this before. Uh, what time did you uh, stream Fluffy Twiglet? I have been out for quite a lot of time this afternoon, um, but I did look around before and after. Turn this up a bit more. Chosen 07. Hello there. Welcome. Yes, I'm in the studio this evening. Which is kind of not surprising because that's, <laughs> that's the entirety of the studio. And it's the only place I can broadcast from at the moment. Uh, 
And with a bit of little, this is kind of going to look like sort of a rough leafy sort of um, sort of thing. Without needing to explicitly sort of de define things. Tangent or twelve. I did have a look. Because I was um, I was at the uh, computer at that time, uh, Fluffy Twiggler. Um, I looked two or three times um, during that time as well. And uh, I do have it set so that um, Twitch reminds me as well. Uh, what did you uh, what did you do on stream today? It is a bit weird. I was looking, looking out because I wanted to see. Cillian, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. I'm just applying random heat in random locations around this area here in the hope that it will actually look like a tree or bush at the end of it. Let me just move that and I'll put it straight down on the desk. It's a bit easier than holding it. Now this is one time when I want fairly distinct sort of shapes. <laughs> and that'll probably be the one time when it decides it's not going to give uh, distinct shapes, it's just going to do whatever it feels like. It's not looking too bad. It's um, not necessarily the best uh, representation of a tree. So maybe that's one of the things I ought to try and do some pyrography of is, is a tree at some point in the future. Oh, 
Actually, I've got some nice small uh, plywood plaques just sort of credit card size, uh, which might be good for doing something like that on just sort of um, maybe do just a tree on the on the thing or maybe a flower or something like that but uh, you know, for practicing trees that might be an interesting idea and to sort of look what a real tree looks like like an oak or a willow or something and, and try and do that just on these small plaques Well, that's very nice of you, Chosen 07. Um, but if I take your meaning, um, I, I can also read that in English. Um, and uh, in, in literal English, it probably means the opposite of what you meant it to mean. <laughs> it kind of feels like uh, there's a bit off the missing off the end, which is but can't. Um, <laughs> but thank you. Sorry, my sense of humour mentioned it before. Um, I don't think they have uh, uh, any voting going on at the moment, but uh, that's nice of you. Oh, no, I wasn't suggesting you were being uh, sarcastic, um, Charles No. 7. It's um, the, the way it's sometimes it, it's, it's like the one, the, the other, the other typical one, which is I cannot recommend this person highly enough, which basically, if you actually read what it says, means you can't recommend them at all. Uh, and it just triggers my uh, sense of humour. Hmm. <laughs> So the fact that I've been doing this for nearly two weeks now doesn't count. Ah, <laughs> uh, birdie lover. Uh, what's the tool called and how does it work? Um, it's a pyrographic pen. What its official title is, is, is I don't really have uh, official titles as such. They do get called different things. Different manufacturers will give them different names. Pen does seem to be a a reasonable representation for this particular style of tool. Sometimes they get called a stylus. Uh, it's electrically heated, um, so that's what this cord is here. This is supplying about one and a half volts, so about the same as you get with a torch battery or a couple of torch batteries um, to uh, uh, to the tool that's at the end. Some of them, th these, this is a replaceable tool. Some of the other pens have a fixed welded tool, so that's not replaceable. Um, and then what we've got, let me just put that down so it doesn't, I'll show you uh, what we then have is, I've got a control unit, which is there, uh, which converts the mains down into that one and a half to, it's, it's, I don't remember the exact voltage of these, but they all work at about one and a half to three volts. So one or two torch batteries. So what we got on here has got the main switch, LED to tell me it's on. That's the temperature. So that that controls the temperature. It's not a temperature control, and I can't I can't set a, a, a temperature that I want. 
I can just turn this up until it until I feel it's a temperature that I can work with. Um, this switch here decides which of these two outputs is being heated at, say, at the moment. So this one is on the left because of the LED, which is the tool I was showing you. This other one is for this particular tool here. So I can choose and switch between them fairly quickly, which is which is quite useful. Um, and then, essentially, when you apply heat to any organic substance, it's debatable exactly what it's doing, but effectively it's cooking it. Um, so, um, just like you, you know, might cook some meat in a pan, it's doing a very similar thing. <laughs> it's 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 cooking the wood fibres. It's drawing out some of the sap um, and. Uh, heating that up which then sits on the surface that's some of the brown color some is coming just from the fibers themselves which are being which change color when they when a lot of heat is applied so this is running at something like mm, I'll take a guess something like 150 to sort of 250 degrees Celsius which is enough um, uh, to cause the wood to start to change color I can warm it up which works faster, or I can cool it down, which works slower to a point where it's it's too cool to have an effect on the wood, but it will still burn me, so I still do have to be careful with it. But um, and, and then this will work on other things as well. You Pyrography you often see done on gourds. Um, there is, there's done a lot on, on those. It can be done on paper and card. It can be done on something like papyrus, uh, uh, grass fibre, basically. Um, anything which is basically organic leather is um, is used quite a lot. Um, not a pleasant smell with leather, but you can use it. <laughs> and thank you, uh, Chosen07. Uh, a ducky. A purple ducky. quite a nice drawing around it as well. Mm. Yeah, nice, um, nice effect that uh, fluffy twiggler. I'm sorry, I missed the stream. Uh, yeah, I've got this set right. So hopefully that answered uh, question birdie lover Um, essentially, I'm just wanting to apply texture, something that looks sort of dappled um, around here. Um, so I don't, I don't particularly want any focus. I don't want detail leaves, for example. I want the focus to be up here. I just want to connect to the bottom to to the ground, give put something in this space, um, just to do that. So I don't really want a lot of attention on it, but I want it to look like something. Um, and hopefully this will look either like a bush or a tree. So I'm mainly using the flat of this uh, tool, and it is flat, it's a flat shader, just 
using it like a stamp so one of the things I, I almost never do is hold it in one place that's precisely what I'm doing here temperatures turned down so that I don't heat up the wood too quickly um, if I used my normal sort of temperature on this I, I, this would be black if I held it this long um, but uh, this allows me to just then use sort of a slightly different area of the tool, tip it up a little bit for example just to get a little bit of a dark line. Um, so that just, in theory, I want that to look like just lots and lots of leaves basically. <laughs> Doctor Who! Yep, yeah, in fact, that's due in the UK. That's due to start shortly. So I'm wondering if it's this past weekend or if it's next weekend uh, for the next series. So I will be watching that. Um, yeah, it does. It, mm, patience is an interesting one, uh, buddy lover. Um, with all of the crafts, um, that subject comes up quite a bit and um, it's not so much well what I would describe as needing patience is not when something's working you know this you know it might take time to do things you might sort of want to hurry them along uh, but really patience I find is something that you need when something isn't going as you want it to go so it's not going fast enough uh, it's doing the wrong thing uh, when I'm doing uh, the jewelry for example if I keep dropping the, the rings on the table that's when patience is needed when something's going nicely it's flowing it might be taking its time but you're making progress I don't find you need patience um, if I was doing this and I wasn't making a mark and I kept having to do it, then maybe patience would come into it just to sort of uh, be prepared to wait. But um, yeah, I know what you mean. It does take time uh, and it takes time to, if you just want black lines, you want everything black and white, it can be quite fast because you can turn the temperature up and you, know, you get a black mark as soon as you, you move, the, you touch the pen down. Um, so you can do it that way if that's the style of art that you like. I prefer this style, so it, it is a little bit slower. Um, what is the image, the salt dom? Sorry, the salty dom. The image is of a monorail from about 15, 10 to 15 years ago, Walt Disney World, uh, Epcot in Florida. Um, it was, I, I took a lot of photographs out there at the time on holiday and a few years ago now when I started airbrushing I did an airbrush uh, image of this same the same train same scene basically and uh, about a couple of weeks ago I was just looking through an old portfolio came across that and thought that looks nice um, as an image <laughs> And I'll have a go at doing it in pyrography. So that's where it comes from. Um, but you love it. it. It is possible to do um, to create your own net stylus. Um, it's safe if you're working with love. Well, you work with low voltage. There's two ways of doing it actually. Um, you, if you get hold of a soldering iron. That's one way of doing it because the soldering iron is, uh, and they can get some fairly cheap soldering irons, um, and that will work on its own. Uh, it's a single heat though, so you know, the way in which you control that is to move it faster um, on the wood or try and hold it above the wood uh, and control the heat that way on the soldering iron. But a soldering iron will do the same job um, quite quite easily. Um, it's a lot you know, don't work with don't work with mains so never put mains into the end of this at all ever that's not it's not worth it um, so if you can get something like a three volt a, a three volt transformer but you need something that's going to operate at about 10 amps um, which is a relatively specialist thing so whilst you can do it 
um, I tend to would suggest it's safer not to do so to be honest um, but what you, you you can get machines that are relatively cheap uh, which have a, a stylus it's usually a fixed stylus with two you know with with the, the screw ends on here and then you can't you can put your own tips on them it's just uh, a nichrome wire resistance wire um, these have effectively been formed by uh, I suspect squeezing them in a press so it's a piece of wire that's been squeezed to flatten it out you could do the same thing with a hammer um, the nichrome wire you can bend into all sorts of shapes to work with uh, and you can get different resistances of nichrome wire so um, you can effectively get different heat ranges but um, so from that point of view you can make you can make the tips they're, they're a safe thing to do I kind of wouldn't as I say suggest people uh, working um, with uh, with the amount of current that you really need to uh, to available shall we say to, uh, to to drive one of these things because if you haven't got the right cord cords for example will get hot at that sort of current level connectors um, if you haven't got a good connection here for example or, or on a machine they get hot as well um, resistance is and that's what these this wire is on the end it's a resistance causes a res resistance so when you put current through it resistance plus current equals heat if there's resistance in a connector or in a cable they get hot so um, can do it if you know what you're doing uh, if you don't if you're not sure about what you're doing highly recommend you don't try um, heat uh, you know if you get too much heat in this cable you might melt the, the insulation for example if it's if it's a meltable kind that would then short the wires which would then cause more heat um, and then you you could easily get a fire if you're not careful <laughs> Uh, thank you, Chosen07. I've been a le I've done some lecturing in my time, but I'm not sure about teaching. Yep. A lot of people do do make the tips, by the way, uh, make their own tips. Um, I'm I'm just actually going to have a look if I've got to, because um, I do have some wire for that. Uh, no, the pussy cat's been sleeping uh, where the wire was. I did have a tube with. Actually, I wonder if it's in front of me. Yeah, I do. Here we go. I've got some more, but here's this is this is the wire. So I, I don't know if you, you might not be able to see. Well, actually, you probably can. One's thicker than the other. So this is thicker. This is thinner. So at any particular setting on this machine, this wire will get hotter than this one. Um, so I can I could bend that into like an S shape, into a uh, a feather shape, uh, into basically anything that. Um, any shape which I want to work with uh, if I want it to create circles for example I could create almost a circle I can't create a full circle because it wouldn't get hot uh, wouldn't the circle but I could create something like that or I could you know uh, if I find something like an anvil or a vice or I could sort of sit that across beat it with a hammer flatten it out just like these are flattened out um, and and create a shape out of that so you have some, you know. It's it's not a case of you have to buy tips, for example. A lot of a lot of the machines don't have pens like this. They have a pen, which is generally uh, permanently wired at certainly at this end, and sometimes permanently wired at the machine as well. Or it's got really big, strong connectors on it to make sure you get a good connection. But they then come with screw terminals on the end. Uh, and then uh, you, you, you you can buy this wire either as cut strips like this or as a reel 
uh, and then uh, you can make what you like in terms of uh, tips and a lot of people do for very specialist jobs as well you can use these for example if you work with uh, some mylar for example you can use wire like this to to cut mylar so you can cut stencils out of things uh, in theory you could uh, well i suppose if you turn the temperature down you could do things like cut and sculpt wax um, using uh, tips as well uh, and then obviously with something like that you can create really fancy shapes and use that to cut wax so there's, there's you know as I say, if you know what you're doing electronics wise, you can create the control units. They are really simple. There's not a lot of, um, uh, there, there isn't a lot of uh, technology in them, shall we say. But um, just the, the currents involved make it, it it's, um, make it potentially risky if you don't understand, shall we say. Well, uh, thank you for your confidence, Charles. No seven. I don't actually know how smart I am. I don't think I'm that smart. Um, and I suspect there's certain people that would probably agree with that definition of me not being very smart. But uh, thank you. And what I'm just doing here is using the sort of technique of stuff that's further away being sort of lighter, more see-through than the stuff which is closer. So I'm sort of darkening up the center uh, of things. Um, the odd thing being though that if I overlap these two, because this is darker, it'll look to be behind. It's a weird thing. So sometimes darker goes backwards, but... Um, so I'm just using that sort of technique just to make it look a little bit more 3D. One thing I've never seen with, maybe I'd have to invent it myself, one thing I've never seen with these pens any on any machine is temperature control. Actually, actually temperature control, so you'd be able to set a temperature and the tip would maintain that temperature. Um, something I've never seen, I mean this, if I hold that down, uh, the tip loses, loses heat, so the next time it doesn't go as brown. I've got to hold it for longer, and it would be nice quite often with these uh, with these machines. If I'm and now I'm, I've not got this tip on the wood, it is actually heating up. Um, it's only heat so far; it's not going to get red hot or anything like that. But if I then touch that down, I get a dark mark straight away because it it had time to heat up and absorb a bit of heat. Now uh, temperature control would stop that happening. And it's kind of something that would be nice. So maybe one of these days I shall have to invent my own temperature controlled version uh, of something like this. The only real difficulty with doing it is being able to measure the temperature on the tip. There are uh, relatively simple techniques of doing it, but I 
This one doesn't look as good as that. Yep, indeed, uh, birdie love. That's correct. The you know the as you go away, things get mistier. The further away they are, and the darker they are, the closer they are to, towards you. There is sort of a if you if you try it sometimes though, there is a sort of a if you get really close, you get two things in front of each other. The one that's darker will look to be behind. So there's a sort of a I don't know if it's a crossover. Just in in practice. If I sort of make this bush darker than this one, this one will look to be in front of that. Um, it's a bit weird. Maybe maybe it's when you get that, when you get to the close foreground, it's maybe your mind sees it a bit like in shadow from the thing in front of it. So, uh, but uh, uh, Rish, good evening. Well, there's about three of us around. Um, Canon Bear, I know, does a, or did a little uh, pyrography, and um, C. Josh, I think, C. Josh something, uh, also uh, did a little pyrography at uh, one time, and have seen somebody else, but uh, not for a while, I must admit. Welcome to the studio. In this particular case, I'm just experimenting because I have no idea how this is going to work. Bish, thank you very much for that. That's most kind of you. Um, so what are like mistakes you should do whilst using this method? <laughs> um, not quite sure I understand, buddy lover. Uh, you you appear to be asking me what are the mistakes I should make um, and ideally you shouldn't make mistakes I guess you may be asking one of two questions what are the mis most likely mistakes to happen uh, and the second one is potentially how do you fix mistakes okay the one of the most likely mis mistakes that you get happening or uh, with with work like this is this tool, as I mentioned, is getting hot. When I touch it down to the wood, I'm going to get a darker mark than I would expect. So, one of the so so you know if if I want it to do a very light area like this, and I just touch this down now, I'm going to get a bright a brown mark, a dark brown mark, which I don't want because I want it to be light. So that, that's one of the typical mistakes you make, and there's a couple of ways around fixing that. One is to simply take this and blow on it, which will cool it down enough so that when I touch it down, I don't get that brown mark because it's cool and will warm up. I could keep um, a scrap bit of wood to one side here just to do exactly the same thing, put it down on there, which will cool it down enough so that when I put it on the workpiece, it doesn't create the dark mark. Um, and then I can just carry on with the pen. Um, the other way of doing the same, uh, doing a similar thing, is to think of it working with it like an aeroplane landing. So you move it, touch it down, keep it moving, and lift it off. So whenever the tool is on the wood, it's always moving. So don't put it down and move it because that's just done the very thing you didn't want to do, which is to hold it in one place and touch it down and move it um, so you can you can use the technique of landing lifting off uh, and that almost always will be will avoid you creating dark marks that's the main the main um, thing with doing all of uh, pyrography is that the the other one that often is a um, 
mistake people make is wanting it perhaps because of seeing time-lapse videos but wanting it to go a lot faster um, so when when you if I put this down here you see I it's um, it takes a while to go brown um, it's not you know it's not getting really dark and I'm sort of taking taking quite a time uh, for this to happen and um, okay people may get impatient with that it's not working as fast as they want so what they'll do is turn turn the heat up on the on the tool or, or use a hotter tool generally and what is a little bit odd it, it takes a while it, it if you were to sort of draw graphs it sort of it takes a while to start to go brown that but then very rapidly goes brown uh, and quite darkly brown um, the longer you hold the heat on but it sort of is so that sort of curve um, so the way you sort of have to do to do it basically is to just keep going over the same area and build the color up a little bit more slowly especially if you're not very experienced at it because working with a hot tool you have to work fast if you don't want everything just black um, I wish your mum does portraits as well on, on wood. Okay. That's fantastic. You ought to um, show some photographs of that. Yeah, I shouldn't do. Okay. Well, so there's some other things you shouldn't do, uh, really. it's Well, there's there's nothing you shouldn't do, but it, it, there are things that uh, and it's won't give you what you're after. You know, if you... Um, I am, for example, wanting to create marks when I touch this down, so I'm breaking that rule, if you see what I mean. So it's not a rule. It's you know, If you're after smooth gradients, that's one of the things to avoid, uh, as is um, you know, turning the heat up because it's not working quite fast enough for you. It takes a while to develop uh, the skill to work fast with a pyrographic tool such that you don't uh, go a lot darker than you intend there are people that can do it there are people that work with acetylene torches and can get really good light tones and things like that so they've had a lot of practice but there so there's there there are the ones uh, the, the two main things that uh, really get most people and they get me from time to time as well i forget to keep the tool moving and I burn thing you know, I get a dark mark and, uh, and things like that and occasionally I do get a little impatient I'll turn the heat up and again I'll get something darker than I expected because that's part of it good evening fear reaper So what I'm trying to get here is just something that looks like foliage. <laughs> I'm not, well, it's sort of. It is, I'm not. I'm not as pleased with this on the right hand side. Yep, that's right, birdie lover. Certainly when it's on wood, consistent, the more consistent you can get. If, if you're after plain, you know, smooth textures or, or smooth gradients, then consistency helps a heck of a lot. Um, found the problem with your website. Oh, okay. So things don't restart, uh, keep restarting when two people uh, are on the same same thing that's good uh, biscuits I'm assuming that means you've just got some uh, fluffy twiggler <laughs> I'm 
Mrs. Zaragana would like some of those biscuits, please. There's a packet of crisps downstairs. Okay. <laughs> Um, especially if they're chocolate biscuits. Uh, Fluffy Twiggler is sharing her biscuits with you. Mm. <laughs> oh dear. I don't know if you call that, but essentially she says thank you and hopes they stop her, feel, her feeling hungry. Um, oh, the oh, she devil. Good evening. Welcome. You've got homemade. I've got a feeling that your biscuits are different though, uh, she devil, um, with bacon and coffee. Um, <laughs> uh, she, yeah, if I remember rightly, she devil is American. Biscuits to Americans are, of course, a different thing to b biscuits in the UK. Um, I guess uh, the biscuits that uh, Fluffy Twiglet's talking and I'm talking about, you might call cookies. Um, or a, a harder form of cookies and buddy lover also says hi to mrs Aragon. <laughs> yes they are different uh, she's still asking has anybody got any chocolate <laughs> uh, dear. But yeah biscuits with bacon oh no i think i think the i, th I think americans do understand chocolate <laughs> Chocolate day. I know they call it, well, do you call it candy? Candy to me is a hard sweet, or oh, well, maybe a soft sweet, but it, it's not, you know, chocolate seems like something different. But then again, I'm in the UK. Uh, chocolate digestives. They would do nicely, Fluffy Twiggler. <laughs> or the finger biscuits. Oh. <laughs> Um, I suspect Fluffy Twiglet might know what finger biscuits are. I'm not sure about anybody else. They're mm. um, chocolate coated biscuits, but they're, they're a long, thin stick type of thing. All I really want to do is just sort of apply ra fairly randomly, just sort of dark and light areas, you know, just as though you see in between leaves and things. <laughs> bon 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 uh, bon bonbons or bon I don't know what I must I must say I don't know what bon bombs are, birdie lover. Um, unless what you mean is what would be called bon bonds, B O N B O N. Leatherhorn, good evening to you as well, and I am not too bad. Thank you very much for asking. That's uh, kind of you. I hope you too are as well. Mind you, I'm not quite sure what. Whilst I kind of know what bon bonds are, I don't actually know what they are. <laughs> that doesn't sound. Sorry. Okay. It with with things like biscuits and sweets, quite often you, you do get odd things that have you know weird names, and that might have been one of them. I think I do recall seeing something at one time like sugar bombs, because when you put them in your mouth, they sort of broke apart. So you might have meant something different. No response. What to the chocolate fingers? Uh, you that that uh, that response came the instant I mentioned it. Uh, Fluffy Twiggler. Uh, 
I'm going to put something else about here. So, I know, hmm, I don't know if I want to go all the way across. I'm going to put something fairly tall here. I might sort of put something in between, but I don't really want to go all the way across. Um, it would look too fussy, but I think I just want something in this space. I don't want to, and I probably, I don't want to go in the middle of the space. It would look too obvious. Excuse me. So I kind of want to be slightly off to one side. Uh, I think I'll probably come closer to this one. Um, but then I'm in the middle of middle of the wood a little bit. Um, so probably just just slightly between the middle of the wood and the middle of the space. Probably just about here. <laughs> Indeed, um, Fluffy Twiggle is correct. I'm in Yorkshire. That's that's fine. Uh, is it? It's got a biscuit. Oh, retro restore. Finger shaped chocolate biscuit. Um, I don't know. I kind of think of bonbons as more. Sugar yeah, like a, Sorry? Powdery sugar. Powdery sugar coated oval. Yeah, oval. That's right. So lo oval lozenges almost, um, uh, and a pow powdery sugar coated lozenger rather than sh uh, finger shaped biscuits. Retro restore. Um, thank you very much, Leather Horn, about that. And uh, um, yeah, Mrs. Zaragana. Do well, doesn't her artwork is either candles candle making which she's not done for a while i do encourage you to start we might get her next year doing some when we've got some more space to do it in um but she's not that interested in uh streaming it i might be able to sort of show some things if we get her to do some but i won't, won't probably won't get her uh, persuaded to stream um but otherwise she kind of writes diaries for the cats Oh, well, she's not me for a little while, but that's her. She, you know, the, the daily, the daily life of cats. You know, like um, um, I don't have a cat's blog, if you want, of a better term these days. You know, um, she writes it on behalf of the cats. The cats come and tell her their stories for the day, and she puts them down. Um, uh, nothing can she. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's what I would have said. Um, Birdie lover, something, yeah. Or something similar, you know, that sort of idea, yeah. Uh, retro is still, well, to um, to me, what you were describing, uh, Cadbury's finger biscuits. <laughs> we shall see, Fuffy Twiglet, we shall see. Not for the moment, but um, I'm trying. I think something like um, candle making would be quite cool on, uh, well, it'd be quite hot, but because uh, <laughs> you've got to heat the wax, uh, but would be um, quite an interesting thing for, uh, for to, to, to be done on Twitch. I know she had an interest in not just moulding them, but carving them, so um, that would be uh, a real good thing if I uh, could manage to get her to... Uh, to carve them but I, I know technically the problem we've got with that is being able to um, heat the wax because uh, you kind of need lots of colours and they you heat wax uh, in a water bath um, because you never heat wax directly uh, in a can with a with a flame or any form of heat because it, it will combust or it can combust if you uh, you know forget about it or something like that so what you do is you you put a, a copper can into a water bath and you heat the water that way the wax is never in contact with the heat itself um, and you basically can't vaporize the wax which is when it will ignite uh, and if the water boils away then basically the you know the the wax isn't in contact with the heat and eventually your bottom of your vessel will melt but 
at least you're not going to have a fire. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, they're unfortunately copper cans and they need to be about 18 inches deep and fairly wide. Um, they're about 30 or 40 pounds each at least. Uh, and then you need the vessel to uh, to put the water into uh, and you need probably about three or four of these because you really need different colors for carving uh, and so unfortunately it's quite an expensive thing hard to find as well uh, <laughs> uh no well tempting with biscuits might possibly work but um unfortunately she's now i think gone to see if there's something on television so yeah i think it would be fun to watch candle making um we might well may, maybe if the um space allows next year we might get some on because i i can do that as well it's you know it's it's really just uh, you know molding like you might mold with plaster of paris or something like that but um you know we she had we uh did sort of make latex molds as well so how did I find out about Twitch stream? Um, I've been watching Twitch probably, I think it's said something like 2012. So I used to watch gamers. Uh, one of the game, well, a few gamers, shall we say. One of the games I watched is Minecraft. And um, at one point in in the Minecraft category, I came across uh, somebody called, I think it was Artillery8262, JB Drawing is, is, is the other name, is, he also goes by, uh, an electronic artist uh, who would draw Minecraft character scenes, things like that. And I'm interested, obviously, I'm interested in electronic art. And when he was around, I'd watch him. And uh, one day what I noticed was the stream title, which sort of said Artillery 62, you know, drawing Minecraft characters on creative. Well, what's this creative? Uh, and I noticed it was an underlined link, so I clicked it. Uh, and I didn't go to bed until about six hours later. And this was at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> um, because I, uh, you know, I found the creative category at that point, and um, it's it's nice to say I've never watched a, a game stream since, but it's not quite true. Um, but I have I have watched creative a heck of a lot. And uh, one of the other people I came across was started watching creative was a guy called Three D Block, who is an airbrush artist. And that is also something that I do. So I was kind of interested watching him. And uh, after a little while of discussions, he kind of persuaded me to start streaming. Or he made me promise to start streaming. So I did. And I've streamed, apart from being on holiday, I've streamed every night since. So that's um, that's how it um, came apart. About. Your grass paper fell down outrageously. <laughs> Uh, I'm guessing you didn't have enough fibre in it, uh, fluffy twig. Let me. You probably want some like meadow grass, you know the real long stuff, uh, really coarse, uh, coarse leaves, I suspect. But I'm guessing. I don't know. But if I remember right, it's all about the fibres in the um, in in the leaves that, um, or perhaps the st the stalk that. Um, give you what you're after in terms of paper making perhaps there's some straw around you could nick or borrow permanently <laughs> you found the cat yeah as i say i think i think i, I think i saw it at about um, 10 o'clock at night and it was about four or six hours later when i went to bed yeah that first uh, very first night Exilian, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I don't know, I've enjoyed it greatly. It's you know, whilst I can sort of say you know I I I, I like I did it to I did it to teach or I did it to sort of 
explain about art or I did it to sort of show how things like pyrography for example take quite a long time um, and you know so when you know, if, you, if you ever see pyrography up for sale for example then and somebody sort of got something like this and it's sort of I don't know two three hundred pounds and you go just a bit of burnt wood you actually can now see why it costs that sort of money uh, because something like you know something like this is is now what we're close on I've been doing this about 10 days so at least 20 20 odd hours in it so far and things like that um, providing it's to artwork um, which is family friendly yep okay yeah fluffy twiglet there will uh, Oh, bourbons. Bourbon biscuits. Yeah. Um, so they're a gin, uh, not gin, no, they're, they're a, they're sort of a, they're sort of a chocolatey flavoured biscuit, aren't they, with, with the cream inside. Yeah. Bourbon biscuits. Yes. And they even put the name on the top. <laughs> See, that's one of the, you know, talking about mistakes earlier um, um, from who I was talking to. Um, but, you know, this this tool is heated up and when I put it down and I've got a dark mark, I might, if I was wanting a light one, I've just got something a lot darker than I intended. Um, and yet, if I now just put the tool down a little bit, it now doesn't do it. It's quite light. Okay, I'm doing this on purpose, but um, and I can keep, touch, keep touching that down, and it's not particularly the mark gets lighter and lighter because I'm just basically conducting the heat away from the pen, and it takes a little while to warm up. Um, so when you do it sort of like this, for example, uh, because you're moving the pen, you spread basically spread the heat out, and then you can build up the colour. And you might not see that particularly, but it's. It's it's got a little bit of colour, and the more I do it, the darker that colour is going to become. It's got a greyish sort of colour now. Um, and if I keep on, I'll get to sort of some of this darker and richer colour. Uh, and if I really uh, keep on for long enough, uh, if I wanted it really dark, I'd probably slow right down. So I'm not I'm not actually I don't want it I don't want something that dark here, so I won't do it. But that's about as dark as I want to go. But if I slow down, um, then then it will get darker faster, like I mentioned. But if I want, if what I'm after is really dark, um, then that's acceptable. But I'm still in control. It, it's the it's it's when you do something like that and you touch down, you get a dark mark. That when you're not in control, that's when uh, when you've got the problem. Um, One of the hardest things to do is be random. <laughs> Trees are random, so I don't particularly want a geometric shape, but it's really hard to be random.
Okay, but do you love that? Well, good luck. Welcome. You're welcome to paint along. I can do with it, but oh, okay. Well, I can't guarantee being able to watch tomorrow. It will highly depend upon what work I've got um, got on, and just how much I need to concentrate. I do, I do watch well in quotes watch streams at work. Um, they're on. I tend to listen to streams at work more than watch. Uh, occasionally I'll just take a look across um, whilst I'm working I, I actually um, when I want to concentrate on something I like a background noise which is um, coherent but not but not music uh, music I tend to concentrate on not the thing that I'm on but if it's like voices I can I can listen like I, I used to uh, a lot of the time I used to put a talking book on uh, whilst I was working and uh, I can concentrate and, and actually listen. So I'm actively listening but um, rather, rather than watching. But um, sometimes I need to concentrate enough that I can't do that. Oh, I'm going on lots of phone calls in which case I can't have background noise going on. Because uh, then I get people asking what's happening. And the easiest way to uh, um, to explain what the noise is is to say the television's on. But then people start thinking you watch television at work. It's not quite the same thing. But I shall try and listen uh, listen or watch it. Well, these might not be the most successful trees, but given they're the very first time I've ever done a tree. Mm, almost the very first time I've done a tree. Um, then I don't think it's too bad. They look reasonably it's like foliage of some kind. And especially when you, if you... Um, most people who have watched me do Pyrog before may well be familiar with the tree, I, uh, the other tree that I've done. Um, I don't think the two compare <laughs> in treeness. I'll show you that in a moment for those that might not have any idea what I'm talking about. Not bad, not bad. I'll show you the. So, I think I can almost claim these are my first trees, uh, given that those are my actual first trees. <laughs> those two there, that's it. That's my only tree experience. Yeah, that's right, exactly. No, music is distracts me, but um, coherent noise like talking um, doesn't. I can I can tune it out, or if it's uh, say like a stream, I can listen to it um, without it distracting me. So I shall put this one away. But that's that's my first treat. <laughs> It kind of work very well for curly hair as well, I think, with that. Ah, uh, dear. Thank you very much, Leatherhorn. Salute to Sunset, that one is uh, called. Because that's what it looks like the elephant is doing with its its um, trunk up like that. It's, you know, sort of, not, I don't want to say waving, but sort of saluting the sunset. As it goes down across the African savannah. Right. Do I need 
some more foliage in the bottom of there. That doesn't look quite right around there. Let's do a bit more. Something around there. Something's not quite right. I think it probably looks a little bit too... Maybe too, too dome-shaped. Let's just see if we can sort of just add a little bit of irregularity to it. Uh, of course, Big Brother's on, isn't it? That's where Mrs. Arrogant Art's gone off to. Uh, yeah, well, it, sort of partially. Partially, it um, most of the trunk was actually created purposely by drawing drawing lines with a pen. Um, an actual elephant's te uh, skin texture is a lot more sort of there is there is uh, something resembling that on the trunk, but the skin texture itself is a lot more sort of uh, irregular patterns. Just sort of, uh, you know, creases like that all over. Um, but the, one of the things, you, one of the choices you have to make with this is the level of detail. Is, sometimes you leave out detail; it, you can put too much in, and that's mm, that's close <laughs> um, uh, to that point. Sometimes it, it gets too busy, and and you know it's. I suppose I could get with go with a finer tip, and I can put extreme detail in if I really want it to. But um, generally speaking, I don't find it works very well. So you tend to leave some detail out, like for example the really crackled looking skin of an elephant. If I'd have put it in, you kind of would have. You'd have spent too much time looking at that rather than what you know the actual trunk was meant to be the. The main focal point with the fact that there was an elephant behind it was sort of almost incidental because um, that that sort of shape and that sort of almost that sort of you know bye bye sun type of thing was the uh, was the effect I was after. But uh, pyrography works really well for sunsets <laughs> with that sort of you know that sort of graduated sky, which would obviously be really really a dark red color. Um, in uh, and sort of a you know the brown and the red similarish sort of colours enough to to make sunsets really nice to deal with pyrography. Okay, um, so I might might put a bit more, a few more dark marks into there. That one's not too actually. That's not so bad now. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just apply a little bit of light just across the top of there. So we kind of imply that there's something bush or something behind these two. 
Be more in the distance. Taking that ir that regular nice smooth edge off has kind of makes that look better now. Uh, and now to me, and I'm looking at the what's being broadcast to you guys because I've mentioned it before, but for people who haven't heard it, um, for a way in which, the way in which this camera is working is you're getting a view that I would have if I held this at about three feet distance. I don't know if it's something to do with the focal length of the lens or, or something. But what's being broadcast out to you guys is something that I would see if I held this out at arm's length. And um, rather than me getting up and one and taking a step backwards, uh, what I'm doing is looking up at the out the broadcast window, the window that shows me what's going out to the internet. Uh, and so I get that same view without having to step back, which is quite useful. It saves all of you know, saves wear and tear on the knees. And I'm an old man, you see. Um, <laughs> so uh, when I'm looking up like this, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, now I think those they don't look they look okay. I'm just m holding it to avoid the glare a little bit off the lights. Yeah, I think this middle tree needs a little bit more messing with it. Just a touch. But otherwise, I'm kind of happy with those two. So let's just mess with this. I think it's... Yeah, I probably want a slightly darker core around there. Uh, server in AB. Thank you very much for uh, following. That's kind of it. Seren, Seren, Sarah in, Sarah in. I'm sorry, I'm just experimenting with a way to say the name. Gotta be a bit careful. It looks like I'm getting swirls. Hmm. See if I can just break that up a little bit. I don't want. I don't want something that you can look at and see um, like a pattern of shapes. Now, part of that is, <laughs> it's kind of my own fault, I think, because I kind of did it in that arc. Uh, so that's something to watch is that um, it's what I call tooling marks I I know I'm noticing it there but if, if I was doing a long shape a shape like this for example here and I had used the tool this way you you get an impression because you can't get a perfect match stroke to stroke you get an impression of lines um, now you might just be able to see an impression of lines that sort of go horizontally or horizontally here because that's the way I've done it and, and they look they look natural if I'd have gone the other way it would have um, sort of been fighting with the perspective and it would look really odd and I've kind of done the same thing here although I wasn't trying to get really smooth tones but because I've gone around in that sort of arc, it's visible to me that I've gone around in that arc. Now, I guess if you're looking at it cold, you're not necessarily seeing that. It might come to you if you if you studied it. But um, I I I know what I'm looking for because I did it and I'm seeing it. So I'm just going to break that up a little bit so that you won't see it even if you look for it. Essentially, all I need really do to break that up is just you know, turn the tool to a, a few different angles and just apply it around around the area. 
which will and it will then lose the uh, lose that and it just about has now So the darker marks you kind of just like you see in between leaves you see a little bit sort of just into the the mass of the the tree leaves gives it a little bit of texture it looks a little bit more three-dimensional because of that um, outer edge light reflecting the light sunshine we're in Florida um, so that's you know the lighter edge is fine it looks to be you know bright sunlight these you could you could almost believe that these are underneath therefore they're in shadow at the moment and you know you can see some out there which aren't there they're in the sunshine behind it i'm kind of making it up but it's consistent with the image uh, and so because it's consistent with the image your mind sort of believes it which is good so i think that will do for just joining those to the bottom you see it too yeah sometimes well sometimes it takes takes it to be pointed out and then when you do it it, it stands out like a sore thumb you can't see it's like your uh, ink block pictures uh, not ink, your ink blown pictures once you can see that shape it's there you can't get rid of it but uh, <laughs> uh, did you draw around the um the woman with the headdress by the way because that that was one i couldn't quite see i could sort of almost see it. it's like an african headdress but i couldn't quite see it hmm right so one of the next things i wanted to do is is just up here we did quite a bit of shading on this window because this is very well it, it's rounded basically um the window now looks rounded this section here doesn't quite look rounded and neither actually does the bottom here of the tree it kind of rounds down to this it, what it does in real life is it rounds down to this line here just above this you might just be able to see it above my finger uh, and then this is like a, a side panel which sticks out from it like uh, I don't know, like uh, runners on a, a snow sled for example they sort of stick out um, so I kind of need to give that it's missing that impression this kind of looks flat and straight at the moment uh, and as I say we've got a little bit of curvature on here but it, it doesn't match the window it kind of looks slightly odd so I've got to fix that so thank you very much for Twiggler. Uh, have a good evening and we'll see you tomorrow. Now then, I now turn the temperature, or turn the tool up to my normal sort of working temperature for this sort of area. See, even though I kept it moving, I've got a dark mark, and I blew on it first as well. Um, so I got something that I didn't intend. I can do a little bit about it, but I won't. I won't be able to get rid of it. And I know you can't see that on camera, which is amazing. I can see it here. I can sort of scrape a little bit, heat it up, and just use the edge of the tool, uh, which sort of scrape because it it's the brown sort of sits on the surface mainly, like a, a glaze or a varnish. Um, if you warm it up you can tend to push a little bit it a bit away spread it out a little bit which sort of um, softens it if it's there or at least um, and sometimes just makes it go away um, false pandas English please otherwise you will be timed out or banned Um, uh, 
Orbex. Uh, what is it? Space Age. Well, I guess the intention was it was supposed to look like a Space Age train, but this is um, this is a monorail, which um, was the original pictures from which this um, this is derived were taken 15 years ago, or at least 15 years ago. Uh, this is a monorail from Walt Disney World in Florida, uh, which is at least, as it says, at least 15 years ago the original photographs were taken, uh, from which this is ultimately derived. Um, and of course the idea then in Epcot was that they were supposed to look futuristic, so you're kind of right, but not quite... Um, Not quite uh, sort of right, but not quite right. <laughs> Lost pandas, as I said, unfortunately, it's English or not at all. So, what I'm doing here is darkening the bottom of this area, which I'll then uh, fade out lighter as we come up. Uh, that then gives you. Uh, it's an optical illusion in some ways, but it then gives you the impression of it curving up over the roof. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, well, it's quite, um, it's quite. Uh, I say it's relatively common technique, shall we say, uh, of, of producing art. It, it, it most interestingly, you call it scorching. Uh, most people call it uh, wood burning. Um, I call it painting with heat, uh, which is a more it's closer to the literal translation, because I don't burn any wood. Uh, but scorching is good enough. So now I'm trying to be reasonably consistent about the uh, shading. Um, don't have to be perfect with it because your eye does sort of fix some inconsistencies, or your brain does. Uh, but I, you know, if I'm reasonably consistent with the shading, uh, it makes it easier or more believable. And I'm sort of building up the, the shade a little bit slowly. Because uh, as I go down here, I, I don't want to sh make st sudden step changes. I want it to be quite subtle. Well, it needs to be quite subtle. You almost don't want to see the change. Kind of, if you're looking down, you want to get to the bottom and then just realise, hey, it's darker. Uh, and if I've done that, then then it's worked. Um. Okay. Yes, you can purchase this specific device uh, or devices similar to this. Um. You can also use soldering irons. They don't need to be modified. You can use them exactly as they are. And um, things like temperature control soldering irons, uh, solder stations, can be quite good for that because you they are actually. It's an interesting thought actually. They might actually be better in some circumstances because they are temperature controlled. And uh, yeah, one of the one of the difficulties with this particular tool is isn't temperature controlled. But it, but it's. Um, I must try it with mine actually one of these days. Um, but it's uh, a little bit harder to work. It's like working, trying to um, draw a picture with only one pencil uh, and only one point. You, you, you know, you, you've got some light leeway with a pencil to go sidewards or on the point. Um, but you know, if you're using a soldering iron, that's kind of what you're stuck with. 
but it, they make good tools and depending on the type of art that you're doing a soldering iron will work perfectly well if, for example they work really really well if you want to do, do just black and white line art um, you can do this sort of stuff with them as well you just have to use sort of different techniques um, and just learn how to do it really um, but um, this is a specific tool um, which is electrically heated this one is a is made by a company called razor tip in Canada and then they export various you know to various countries uh, this one's called an SSD 10 and I can show you let me just put that pen to one side so that I don't come into contact with it I just tip the camera so that's that's the device there essentially all that is is a mains to low voltage converter uh, with a control on there which has the effect it's it's not controlling the temperature but it has the effect of varying the temperature so what it's actually doing is controlling the amount of current that gets sent to the tool um, but uh, depending on which tool you use setting six on the tool I'm using is quite cool setting six on this pen tip here would have it glowing orange so it, it's not controlling the temperature it's just you know it's, it's just a variable uh, and the switch there lets me switch between the two uh, which is a little bit of an extravagance but I find it quite useful sometimes uh, when I'm uh, continuously swapping between pens um, there are quite a few other types available as well that's just one of them um, all of them work reasonably well some have more pros than pros than others and some you know some have more cons than others depends on what you prefer what and and also what's available where you live because sometimes um you know, this machine in the uk for example is not really hard to get hold of but um there is an extensive the manufacturer make an extensive selection of pens with fixed what they call fixed or welded tips so like this this tip is a fixed tip I can't change it it's it's welded in this is a changeable tip it's got screws on the side I tend to prefer those fixed tip ones um, but there's only a limited supply available in the UK or even in Europe for that matter um, in terms of which ones are available sizes chips etc uh, whereas if you in the states I think there's about a hundred different variants available there's about 10 in the UK um, so you know it's it has its pros it has its cons I could I guess import them from Canada uh, if I really need it to but uh, I'm don't don't really need to at the moment oh don't worry about constant questions that's part of the whilst it's not the reason I do stream uh, it is one thing that I expected from streaming uh, and from streaming things that people perhaps haven't seen before um, and I'm quite happy to answer questions um, I do enjoy explaining what I'm doing uh, I won't quite say I like the sound of my own voice because I don't think anybody does but <laughs> um, it is fun to explain and um, maybe I've got a, li you know, a, a little bit of interest in teaching as well but I'm not really interested in, in schools uh, what type of wood am I using um, okay you can use any wood depending on what you want okay uh, and it really it really is that simple um, different woods have different characteristics and will produce different effects when used with pyrography so I can use mahogany or ebony for example ebony is almost black and I can apply pyrography to it but essentially what I'll get out of that is one shade black or not colored you won't be able to see anything else on, on ebony um, so 
if I, I couldn't do an image like this for example on ebony but I could uh, you know apply geometric patterns for example to ebony um, so if I had something like a bowl made out of ebony that I wanted to apply pyrography to I could do that I'd more than likely use just black and white geometric shapes for example um, here I'm what I'm doing is I'm making pictures it's a form of art so what I want with that uh, is as much very I want to be able to use as much variation in tone as I can so in that particular case I want the lightest wood that I can find um, that will let me do that because you know the the range is from the color of the wood to black of almost black very dark brown um, so the lighter the wood the more chance I've got it of doing that um, now this this particular wood is birch uh, poplar is another wood which is slightly lighter I've got some to try I've never used it yet it's quite difficult to get hold of in small sheets uh, this uh, so this is this is uh, birch which is a really light wood um, and it, it's it's made I'm using plywood uh, and I'm using plywood on purpose um, so this is three because it's it's only about mm, about an eighth of an inch thick I think or what would that be about three millimeters something like that thick so it's it's three ply so a surface in the back and, and just some mixed wood in the middle uh, and they're using plywood specifically because if I if I use solid birch this thickness and this amount of pyrography that I've put on the front would be enough to cause this boat to warp quite a lot it would would do that in this particular case uh, and some some of the boards where I color the whole thing would warp almost into a dish shape and you you might not be able to see it but this is this is this what is warped I'd have to zoom the camera out a bit more it does have a curve uh, it, it's sort of it's curved like it's curved like that to exaggerate it very slightly um, but the plywood because of the way it's constructed actually resists that warping um, so that's that's the reason I'm using using a plywood uh, Obix thank you for following that's kind of you and and if necessary what I could do with this is just coat the back here with water and apply um, a, a normal steam iron for example uh, which would then just uh, draw the warp back out of it if necessary but it, it's only a small warp it's not really necessary at this moment in time um, but uh, so that's that's the choice that, that's a, one of the reasons for the choice of wood the other reason about that makes birch nice because um, another very light wood is is pine um, Scandinavian pine European pine it tends to be a slightly yellow wood uh, but one of the things about it is y you can see these ring marks these these basically are the tree rings uh, and what what you've got is that the line that you see is kind of a dark it's kind of a harder element of the wood and, and between it is a softer element of the wood now when I apply pyrography across those there isn't much of a difference in tone between the the ring and the, the softer wood either side of it um, there is a slight difference but that's controllable I can control that so you don't see it if I do this on pine it's the the harder ring really doesn't like taking color at all and so you're left with with sort of a very you can see the rings showing up light against the background and they're really hard to get uh, colored in and the other thing about pine with it uh, is that when you apply heat the wood shrinks and it shrinks away from the tip uh, and what you get is you get on pine you get like um, a mountain ridge formed uh, where the rings are which is which is visible 
you can sort of see a value either side of it where the pyrographic tool's been and that isn't necessarily something that you want the birch tends not to do that at all um, whilst it does have some shrinkage uh, it's more to do with the amount of feet that's been applied no matter where it is on the board so that's kind of the, the, the overview how long does it take to do something like this um, this is now about 20 hours if you saw the elephant uh, salute to sunrise that was approaching 30 hours worth of work uh, to do um, lager muffins you like trains good quite a few people like trains quite like trains I'm not particularly a train nut but I like them um, the chop doodle those two statements have got nothing to do with each other um, everybody can draw some people need more practice than others but everybody can draw uh, yeah obix is correct there leather horn thank you very much uh you have to start your day i'm just ending mine so thank you for uh, dropping in that's uh, fantastic um interesting obix i've never tried balsa wood i, I highly suspect because it's quite a porous uh, low density wood it would shrink away from the tip um, I've got some I might try it at some point I do have some sticks of uh, balsa I might have some sheet as well so it's something I can try um, do you predominantly only burn scotch wood as art or do you paint yes <laughs> um, just before I answer that scan kill one two three four happy birthday um, and I don't sing apart from the fact it's a copyright tune as well so that would get my VOD um, uh, silenced so sorry no birthday songs uh, I, uh, I on stream I do f let me put the pen down no in fact I'll, I'll carry on doing things with a pen while I talk um, I do five different things on stream pyrography uh, carving uh, scraper board punch craft and chainmail jewelry making so you might not be familiar with some of those pyrography obviously you've seen uh, carving hand carving although I do do power carving but not on stream scraper board what scraper board is it's some form of backboard wood or card which has been coated with um, porcelain clay and that's been rolled and smoothed flat and then that's coated with Indian ink which is a really black dark ink then once that's dried and I don't make them I buy them made uh, but once it once it's dried what you do is you create the image by scraping away the black surface using sharp tools and anything sharp um, scalpels end of a fiber optic um, cable uh, a Razor, uh, I said a razor blade, a scalpel, uh, pointy screwdriver, anything basically that will scra will scratch, and you create your image out of that. Punchcraft is um, a miniature rug making technique, so it's taking a needle, uh, a special needle. The thread goes right through the centre of the needle. You push it through the material. When you pull it back, you leave a loop of, of thread on the other side. Which is essentially how um, some uh, carpets and, and actual rugs are made and you do that lots of times if you use different color threads you can create a picture which is what i do and the jewelry making is literally that i'm using rings um rings he says um, i've got some in front of me but i'm going to end up knocking the camera i suspect if i grab one but let's see let's put that hat back so just lots of you know, just rings metal rings these are aluminium and they um, then get formed into all sorts of jewelry ow like that so th those are the five five um five things that we do on stream but um 
off stream as I said do power carving so it's using rotary power tools uh, to carve uh, wood uh, engraved glass I do airbrush painting I also do some other forms of rug making uh, there's a couple of other forms of rug making I also do some cross stitching and similar things like that um, I make models so I've got a, a tank half finished remote controlled tank um, some uh, remote controlled articulated trucks uh, model helicopters um, I have a 3d printer around here to build which will get done on stream one of these days so a fair number of other things <laughs> uh, I, I have a habit of when I'm talking too much of, of being um, sort of stopping doing the art but uh, if you guys don't mind then um, okay. you just let it a pine box it took all um, pine pine is really hard um, to do just because of the the rings as as you you found out If you were just lettering it, um, then I would suggest using a bit more heat, because if you're just lettering, it's you, so you you you're kind of more used to it. But it, it's really hard because the pine shrinks away from you when you apply heat to it, um, and 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 the rings really don't colour very well. But um, using um, I don't know what sort of tool you're using. If you're using something like a soldering iron. Um, then one of the things that might make it a bit easier to do is instead of using the tip like you would use a pencil lay it sidewards and use the side of the tool it'll actually help you get straight lines as well um, and that will tend to sort of preheat the wood and heat it a little bit more slowly than, than using a tip um, and try not to put pressure on it it's very easy to especially with the tip to sort of push it hold it against the the wood especially if you're trying to make the rings go dark uh, if you hold it sideways you don't put as much pressure on it it tends not to shrink away from you quite so much uh, although you possibly find the wood feels a bit like it, it, or it looks a bit like you you're pushing clay um, but if you if you use the pen uh, the the soldering iron tool or, or similar sidewards it will tend to heat the the uh, the ring areas up for longer uh, before you get to them with the tip which is where most of the heat is so that might help but um, I don't like working with pine to be honest for that very reason um, I need to make myself a chain mail hood now why do I need a chain mail hood <laughs> What would I use one of those for? Um, Kay loves cream pies. Uh, thank you very much. Well, I hope it is. Yeah. You, the, the, uh, you can say the, the, the best thing with pine, uh, with boxes, is to, choose, is to try and choose a different wood, to be honest, than pine. I, I know pines are relatively cheap. Uh, material for for boxes and to be made you know boxes to be made out of um, but it does have that that difficult limitation you went I know I ended up with you sort of where the ring is just trying to sort of you know, I'd done the rest of it and you're just trying to get just that little area with the ring as I say lettering is a bit easier in that respect but if you're trying to do this sort of thing on, on a pine box it's really really hard um, you know, so I, my suggestion would be to try a, a, a different wood. A birch, unfortunately, I say, is, is a good one for that poplar. You'll see uh, basswood. Actually, a lot, um, especially if you're in America, basswood, uh, Euro, it's also called European line wood, is another one which is quite good for, uh, for pyrography, and that gets used um, quite a bit for things like boxes, uh, certainly over in America. Um, not so much in the in in Europe. Um, 
and uh, it actually gets used a lot for carving as well because uh, the same characteristics make it uh, quite a nice wood for carving. I'll get on with some of this. It is, well it is chainmail uh, obix. Um, the technique, it is a chainmail technique. Uh, the the technique or, or the the weaving of rings together is chainmail. That's what the that's what the technique is called. So um, I tend not to use it in jewelry making. I'll describe it as jewelry making or, or chain making because what I found a lot is if I say uh, I'm doing chain mail, um, then people immediately assume that I'm making armor um, and. And I've mentioned it to people at, at work that I make chainmail jewelry, and they kind of think of metal uh, steel rings or iron rings, and kind of go, "That's not going to be very nice jewelry," until they see some of the pieces, like I showed you that that really colourful uh, bracelet, and um, and and it's only at that point that they sort of realise that chainmail doesn't have to mean you know dull grey metal uh, metal rings and suits of armor um, so yes i could make a potentially make um, a hood but i don't really have much use for one to be honest so it would be um, i've made it now it'll stick in a cupboard and and never get uh, never get used It'd be an interesting exercise to make one, but it might uh, it might be a little bit boring. <laughs> uh, it's generally they're just made out of um, that sort of thing. It's generally made with uh, a weave called European four in one, which um, is okay. You can make some really interesting uh, designs out of it. I, in the box, I've got a bracelet that's um, made out of that. Uh, and it's got it, it's an orange bracelet with uh, black stripes on it, so it's got tiger stripes on it. Uh, but uh, it's not one of my favourite weaves, to be honest. It's it's reasonably fun to make, and it's um, it looks okay. But you know the that bracelet that I showed was a European sixteen one, which I think looks prettier. And there are others like Dragon Scale, which looks um, looks quite amazing compared to uh, to some of the others. Mm. Yeah, I could play it around in my local town, and I'm sure you've got a good idea what they think about that, or they think about me <laughs> if I did that. We don't have any. Um, I guess if if I went I went up to uh, York, for example, then um, I might get away with it. You know, York is sort of a a walled medieval sort of uh, well, town, uh, um, Vikings and things like that. So walking around in chainmail around there might be more of a tourist attraction than anything else. But not my local town. We don't care that sort of tourists. <laughs> I've been to Wolverhampton, you're probably right. <laughs> mm. 
I used to go down there quite a bit. What I'm trying to do here is just gradually darken it so this bit's dark but the uh, and it gets lighter up uh, similar the way the window is done so that th this then appears to follow the same curvature as the window. But I do have to be a little bit careful because I don't want this suddenly to go dark, dark like that. I want it to sort of be uh, a subtle shade shift. So I'm being sort of quite conservative with the heat, so that I don't suddenly get a dark, a dark area. And this this is where it becomes time consuming uh, in doing things like pyrographic art. It's really easy to do things like that black line. Um, it's it's when I want things like these subtle shades or subtle shading effects. Um, you've either got to be really confident with the tool um, and have a lot of practice at doing it uh, to sort of turn the heat up. And uh, and get these effects out of it. I'm not that good. Uh, I've only been doing this about three years, so, um, and I haven't had that much practice. Uh, so you know, generally speaking, it's taking. I have to take a slightly more conservative approach than somebody who maybe has been doing this for twenty years. And. Uh, and can wield one of these things, you know, without a, a moment's thought. Why would anyone want to visit Wolverhampton? Well, the simple answer to that is um, I used to be a salesman, and one of my main customers was in Wolverhampton. That's why I wanted to visit Wolverhampton. <laughs> they bought a reasonable amount of stuff. Most time I didn't see a great deal of it, to be honest. Um, uh, and occasionally um, I'd end up parking more in the centre, just because that's where um, the the only available car parking space was, and therefore I'd be walking a little bit through. I assume it was the centre. I haven't really seen much of it, to be honest. It would be mainly coming in from the motorway, and then. Um, Driving along around the ring road, basically. That's... Mm. That looks more subtle on the screen than it does here. It's it's a bit lighter on the screen, um, but I've got I've got an area in the middle here that looks a bit lighter, so you're not quite seeing it. So I've got a bit of work. You can see that line. I mean, even here we're talking about um, uh, you know pine, for example. That that line there is actually the ring. Um, it's actually, in this particular case, it's actually taken a little bit more colour than the rest. So what I'm going to perhaps try and do is just um, avoid making little brown marks like I just did. And just see if I can just shade around it a little bit. So 
so that it actually looks more you know, like a, uh, a reflection or something like that then it looks like it like a, a ring that's showing up if I do that you should be able to see it's kind of now shouldn't look it shouldn't look as much like a um, a ring as it did a moment ago it, it should now look more like you know a, I won't say a shadow but that sort of idea it's shading now so I'll see if I can do the same thing with this one here because because it's only a, a only a subtle sort of shade uh, d a difference I can get away with this if it was um, something a little bit more pronounced uh, I wouldn't be able to do this but bear in mind I mean the other thing to bear in mind is it's wood it's natural I'm doing pyrography on wood so, so the fact that the grain shows up sometimes sometimes adds to the piece sometimes you don't want it but you put up with it um, but all in all it, it's part of the character of the piece that you're working on and uh, you just kind of deal with it the best that you can Uh, Obix, thank you very much for that. Well, I'll wish you a good evening, but thank you very much for reminding me because I have to dash as well. <laughs> so I'm going to put that tool down uh, and turn the pyro machine off. It's 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 almost there. Um, I'm, I'm still not quite happy with this. I want a little bit more darkness down here to match this, but it's almost close. Um, and it now starts i'm seeing it now as rounding sorry about the flash that's just the camera reacting to my hand um so i've got a then a little bit more work to do around here because it rounds under a little bit which will be the subject of, of the stream tomorrow i think sorting that and and this wing or this this skirt side skirt on the train but it's very relatively speaking relatively close to to being finished now is that but I, I generally finish the stream about 10 o'clock and it, it's after that now. So um, what I want to do is say thank you very much to everybody that's been watching and those of you that's participated in chat as well. Thank you. It's been absolutely fantastic um, talking about pyrography art and everything else. So <coughs> excuse me. So thank you for, for, for participating. Uh, I'm going to do what would be a usual advert for me, which is to say that if there's anybody that's watching that isn't following, then I do, of course, encourage you to push that follow button. If you do it before the end of the stream, you'll even get that cool airbrush uh, animation that comes up. But if you don't want to, that's quite all right. If you just like a notification rather than following, you can follow me on Twitter. And that's another kind of following, but it's a different system. Um... <laughs> I, I am at Zaragana. The details will be on the end plate again in a moment, and they're also below the stream window if you want to look a bit later. If you'd just like to try and catch the next stream, I do at the moment stream seven nights a week. Obviously, give or take any family event or something uh, that comes up, but seven nights a week from 8 pm in the UK. That's UK time. 1900 hours GMT, or I should say UDT. Yeah, uh, Universal, no, UTC, to be correct, Universal Time Coordinated, uh, 1900 hours that is, um, or about 2 hours 10 minutes ago was my stream start time, so that time tomorrow and each night subsequent to that. So there you go, Obix, you now know what time it will be tomorrow, depending on your time zone. 2 hours 10 minutes ago was 8 o'clock, that time tomorrow. Thank you, buddy lover. Thank you as well. And everybody else, it has been fun. See you on the next stream. Bye-bye.